Hello friends, I am Dr. Ashish Sarwal, urologist and men's health expert from New Delhi, India. I always show you review videos of patients who have been successfully treated by me. Today's patient is a 66 year old male from Nigeria, from Enugu state and he is a priest. His name is Father John and he was diagnosed with prostate cancer about three months ago. After he was diagnosed with prostate cancer, one of his friends who I treated in 2019, he is also a father in the same church and he referred Father John to me three months ago. Father Eugene was treated in 2019, I did robotic surgery on him and he was doing very well. So he was happy with his treatment, so he referred Father John to me for treatment of his prostate cancer. When he forwarded the reports, I was quite surprised because the PSA was very very high, it was 40, the PSA was 40 and I always thought that with high PSA, maybe already the cancer has already spread into the rest of the body and now it was untreatable. So I just told him that he should plan to come to India as soon as possible and we'll do a PET scan and after that we'll decide the further treatment and if luckily if his cancer is localized we can do robotic surgery and cure the cancer so finally he got the visa and he came to india and we did a pet scan and as luck would have it his pet scan showed that it was totally clear there was no cancer outside the prostate cancer was still confined to the prostate so he had an organ confined prostate cancer so we discussed the various treatment options and he underwent robotic radical prostatectomy in da vinci platform on 23rd of December 2024. Today is 7th of January. That is about two weeks from the date of surgery. We have removed his catheter. He is self urinating well. There is no urine leakage. His biopsy report has come. Biopsy report shows he is now cancer free. Cancer was localized to the prostate. It was not spread outside the prostate. It was not spread into the seminal vesicles. It was not spread into the lymph nodes. Absolutely clear. So I have told Father John that now he is cancer free and he just has to do his PSA every three months and the PSA value should be less than 0.1. If the PSA value is less than 0.1, that means there is no cancer in the body. So with this, I will now take you to Father John. He will tell his whole experience about his diagnosis of prostate cancer and then how he came to India, his experience during his stay in India and his treatment. Please, Father John. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashish. I'm happy to meet you. Thank you. Honestly, it was a few months ago in Nigeria when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and I got scared. The name alone can put somebody off balance. Right. And I became totally confused. And so there were many people multiplying options to go to this place, go to some other place and so on. But one of my friends and a fellow priest, Father Eugene, approached me and told me no. He has a medical doctor in India who is a specialist and his name is Dr. Ashish. That he will encourage me to go to Dr. Ashish so that we tell that he, the Father Eugene, is convinced that this matter will be a thing of the past. So the following day, Father Eugene had to make a phone call, put a phone call through to Dr. Ashish, telling him that his friend is suffering the same, is in the same case. And from there, we started talking about how to get to India and see Dr. Ashish and see what he too says about it. But then, the next thing would be to obtain visa from the Indian Embassy in Nigeria, which wasn't so easy. But Dr. Ashish assisted us by writing an invitation letter to the Embassy requesting that they should give me a visa to travel to India for this treatment. After about two weeks, the visa was given. Then I started planning, making arrangements to come to India. That time too, I wanted Father Eugene to accompany me. But because I was afraid, how can I travel alone under that condition? Even though I wasn't too weak, I know I was strong, but for a patient, you never can tell. And since it's a long journey, you needed somebody to accompany you. I wanted Father Eugene to accompany me, but it wasn't possible. I left Nigeria and started coming to India. I arrived in India on the 18th of December 2024. Met with Dr. Ashish, then he sent me to do a lot of tests, which I did. When he saw the results, then he admitted me to the hospital. That was on Sunday, 22nd of December 2023. Sorry, 2024. Yeah. Then, the following day, which is 23rd, he performed the, the surgery and during that time too, you know, somebody who has traveled alone, mm -hmm. hasn't anybody with him, I was also not so comfortable about what was going to happen after the surgery. Mm -hmm. 
because of coming alone and I have nobody, I don't know any other person. But I was so impressed that after the surgery, I woke up in the evening and saw staff of the, the hospital around me, both other doctors, nurses, and each person is doing so well. Each of them doing very, very well. I didn't lack anything. Everybody was interested in this international patient to see that he didn't like anything. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, they come to my bed, ask me one question or the other, find, trying to find out if I have any problem. No problem, there was no problem, no difficulties. Even they left a, a, a bell push for me in case I need any assistant. Then I, I press the bell and immediately they hear the bell, they will come. So, my experience after the surgery was that I started recovering from the second day and the recovery was very fast, I must tell you. Then, I watched the nurses, the doctors, they visit me every now and then and then after some days, about four days, I was discharged. So, my observation about the hospital and the staff is that each person is seriously carrying out his or her job prescription and uh, he makes the whole duty of every of the hospital efficient right. both the doctors and the nurses each person is serious with his own job assignment i'm happy about that honestly i'll take this message home to my country then after the surgery i had to return to my guest house and the uh, doctor was having an appointment with me every now and then to see how i'm faring and then the follow-up treatment after the surgery within the space of time. So, uh, that is, for now, this is my experience. Okay, so then, how did you feel when I told you that biopsy has come and now you're cancer free? In fact, when you, if you remember, I said, when I was diagnosed cancer, the name alone mm. got me confused in life. Right. But after surgery and other treatments, the doctor told me there was going to be a post-surgery biopsy test. Mm. Then I kept asking him, have you gotten the report? Then he told me yes. One morning, just a few days ago, he told me yes. Your biopsy report is very good. You are now cancer-free. I jumped up from my bed, got back again, and I started singing. Nice. Thanking God that I am now healed. So that was my expression when uh, in fact, I almost did shed tears of joy. Ah. And your urine control, were you afraid about the urine control? Okay, don't worry. Now you're, now it's a good thing, so... Have faith, everything is fine. Yeah. Well, just excuse me. It's a repeat of that tears of joy. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. Then, I was told also that um, after surgery, the next stage of problem or difficulty would be about um, incontinence because the ring will be dropping. Yeah. But the doctor also gave me a few exercises and asked me to be faithful to it. There are three number, and those three in three exercises will have to be done morning, afternoon, night. And uh, honestly, I was very sincere and faithful to that instruction. Every morning, that would be the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. Mm. I do the exercise, then before I start doing another thing. Then after which, uh, I discovered that the urine. It, 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 it's not, it's not no longer dropping as it, it, it was dropping before. For instance, if I stay in one place, quietly in one place, then, because actually what I was doing was that, I wouldn't stop it if I have a sensation. Right. I was lying on a bed, but when I begin to feel going to urinate, then I would jump up from the bed, rush to the bedroom yeah. and urinate. Mm. Then, at the beginning, it wasn't coming out. It was just dropping. After a few drops, mm. I would go back. Then, but with time and with the exercises, mm. I discovered that it was no longer 
uh, coming out as it used to be. Mm. Except that if I shake myself, for instance, now I would immediately have the urge. Right. But with uh, that pass, mm. I can control it and to and go for a long while, some distance, and then come back. So that is how I've been managing it. Okay. Yeah. But now you're having good control. I'm having control, but even to. I will still have the sensation, the urge to urinate. Yeah. But then, it is uh, uh, recently that when I go out, go to the bedroom to urinate, when I have the, the urge to urinate, mm. then a good quantity of urine will come out. Okay. So, but it has not stopped completely. Okay. So, how many diapers are you using? Because I am, I'm staying in a room mm -hmm. and I'm not used to going out and coming because I'm conscious of the, the urine. Yeah, but like right now you came from your hotel to my center and this is almost one hour. Mm -hmm. So, is the diaper wet? It not, it's wet, but not much. Not much. So basically, when you came here also, you said you wanted to go to the bathroom. So your attention is coming back, your control is coming back. Right? Yes. Yes, I should be traveling to Nigeria, mm -hmm. back to my home. Yeah. Today, happily. Yeah. I'm happy I'm traveling home in good health. Okay, very good. So I think you should preach over there also to all your fellow people who come to listen to you the importance of doing a PSA and getting prostate cancer diagnosed early. You know, that's important because people don't know about PSA, they don't know about prostate cancer. Mm. And when they're diagnosed, that time the cancer is already spread out to the body. So importance of PSA screening is something which you should tell to your fellow people. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think uh, I've learned so much. Uh, yeah. I've learned so much by coming to India and to Dr. Ashish because you see what many what so many people are suffering there now is enlargement. Yeah. And it's from that enlargement he, he develops into the cancer. Yeah. So I, I I heard you. I will take it home. Advise people to go for PSA tests constantly. Yeah. So that the moment they discover it early. Like uh, he was scared when the prostate cancer was diagnosed and luckily the surgery went off well, everything is fine, he's now cancer free. His urine control is not 100% back but I'm pretty sure that within the next 2 or 3 months the full urine control will come back because already 80% control has come, he's using less than 1 diaper per day and when he came to my office he got the urge and he went to the bathroom and passed urine. So definitely control is coming back. So I'm happy about the results and I also want to tell you that this robotic surgery is not something which anybody can sit on the robot and do it. Prostate cancer treatment is very sensitive and delicate. Like if you do it one time and it doesn't get alright, then your incontinence can continue for a lifetime. So always select an experienced doctor who is doing the robotic surgeries regularly so that you can get excellent results and urine control comes back quickly. If you or anybody in your family is suffering from prostate cancer and you want to consult me, you can contact me on email or WhatsApp. My email address and WhatsApp number are given in the description. Thank you. Thank you, Father John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashish.